next matinee theater starring Victor Jory. Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, Vicks Vapronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler, presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory in the delightful RKO romantic comedy, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. But first, here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks Vapor Rub. Your request play today, the romantic screen favorite that starred Robert Montgomery and Carol Lombard. There's an old saying that the course of true love never runs smooth, and another that the first hundred years are the hardest. This is the story of a young couple who found out that both of these were true. The story of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. <laughs> We start their story just after a quarrel. David, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too, darling. I love you so very much. And I love you. Mm. Mm. What a nice kiss. <sighs> Do you just think it's been three whole days and three whole nights since you kissed me? I know, and I sure was getting tired of this bedroom. So was I, but I still say that if every married couple had the same rules as we have, there'd be no divorces. Right. They ought to put it in the marriage ceremony. Mm -hmm. Quote, you are not allowed to leave the scene of a quarrel unless you've made up. Unquote. <laughs> That's simple, because eventually you have to make up. Yeah, well, I better get dressed and get to the office. I can't afford to stay away three days at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, hand me my socks, will you? Uh-huh. Cat. Thanks. You know, darling, this fight was really my fault, I guess. No, Anna, it was mine. I shouldn't get so jealous. And I should also lay off your family. But those questions you ask all the time, like, what did I do on that trip to Paris when I graduated from college? Well, I forgave you for that. But, uh, David, I do have another question. Uh-uh, here it comes again. All right, shoot. Well, if you had it to do all over again... Would you have married me? Oh, now, look, honey. That's my question. Would you? Do you want an honest answer? Well, of course. All right, then. No, I wouldn't. What? Not, not, not that I'd want to marry anyone else. But a man gives up so much when he gets married. But I think if I had to do over again, I'd stay single. Why, you... No, 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 no. Wait, honey. You wanted me to tell you the truth? I hope I haven't hurt your feelings. Oh, no, no, no. It's perfectly all right. Well, that's good. I'm not going to answer any more of your fool questions. They're always getting me into trouble. I feel... Uh, hand me my tie, would you, dear? No, 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 the blue one. Yeah. Of course, David, if you'd like your freedom, i For be... heaven's sake, I don't want my freedom. I love you. I'm crazy about you. I'm used to you. How do we get into these things? And my only hold on you is that you're used to me. <laughs> oh, oh, now, look, honey, you've got the whole thing wrong. I wouldn't oh. know what to do without you. You're my little girl. I'm crazy. <laughs> Don't cry, baby. Don't cry. Come on, now, forgive me. Say you'll forgive me. Well, all right. <sighs> honey, can I go to work now? <laughs> yes, go right ahead. I don't suppose the law firm of Smith and Custer can go on without you. That's it. Atta, baby, that's the way to look at it. See you tonight. <laughs> Good morning, Jeff. Well, good morning, Dave. I didn't know whether you were still a member of the firm or not. Yeah, three days this time. I'm sorry, Jeff. <laughs> Another little domestic disturbance? Uh -huh. You know how Anne is. You have to humor her. Oh, you don't have to explain to me, David. I understand. Fine. I haven't been your partner all this time for nothing. Oh, say, I almost forgot. There's a Mr. Deaver waiting to see you. He wouldn't tell me his business. That it was something private. Deaver? Deaver? Well, maybe a client. I'll go right in. Mr. Uh, Deaver? Yes, yes. I, you, Mr. Smith? Now, that's, that's, that's right. What can I do for you? Well, I don't know what you can do, but uh, were you married in Beecham in March 1940? Beecham? Beecham? Uh, well, yes, yes, I was. Well, I hope you won't be upset by this. But, you know, Beecham is on the other 
side of the Yes, and it's always incorporated in Brenda County. Uh -huh. And you see, Brenda County is in Idaho. Uh -huh. it, you follow me, don't you? No, no, but don't mind me. I'm just listening. Well, uh, we in Beecham found out that we didn't have the right to be incorporated in Brenda County because from the other side of the Bass River, we belong to Nevada. Beecham, Brenda, Bass River. Is that clear? Yeah, yes, that's perfectly clear. Well, what does it mean? Well, we just found out that anybody who got married after the year 1936 with an Idaho license in Nevada, well, it just isn't proper. Well, that's interesting. What do you mean it isn't proper? Well, now, wait a minute, Mr. Smith. I, I don't want you to get frightened or upset or anything. And all it is has been a kind of a mistake. And under the law, you're, well, you're not legally married. What's that? Oh, you really are married and everything, but there's a little technicality. And we figure in case of deaths and wills and births, you know, children. Huh? It'd be better if everybody had kind of got married again, just to be on the safe side. Hmm. And the Chamber of Commerce is sending me around to tell everybody about it. Now, here's your two dollars you paid for the license, and <laughs> you can use it to get another. Well, 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 <laughs> this has very interesting possibilities. <laughs> We've had a very pleasant evening. Uh -huh. David, tell me, what did you do all day in the office? Who did you see? Oh, oh huh? Uh, no one much. Uh, I was in conference most of the day with Jeff. You know, things pile up in three days. Uh, well, what do you say if we go to bed? I have a long day tomorrow. Bed? And just where were you planning to sleep tonight, Mr. Smith? Oh, why, we just thought, thought uh, uh, what? Now, that's a pretty silly question. Oh, no, it isn't. You weren't going to tell me about Mr. Deeper, were you? Well, he was here to see me, too. You know we're not married, you beast. You weren't going to tell me. Oh, but I was going to tell you, honey. I was going to tell you later. Later? How much later? No, now, don't take on so, Anne. Listen, darling. Don't I'm... you, darling. You were going to wait until we had another fight and then throw me aside like a, a squeezed lemon. Oh, stop being dramatic. I'm not being dramatic. I always had a suspicion about you. So did my mother. Your forehead slants back too much. Oh, come here, honey. Let me explain. Now, don't you touch me. You get out now, of here. Now, listen, Annie. And don't call me Annie. Hey, stop throwing glasses. They cost money. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh. Go on. You're not going to stay here. Okay, okay. So I'll sleep at the club tonight, but I'll be back tomorrow. Good night. <laughs> Well, that is certainly a fine thing for a wife to do. I'm gone one night, and she takes our card out of the doorbell and puts in her maiden name, Miss Anne Campbell. Campbell! Oh, you. What do you want? Now, see here, Anne. Are you going to stop this silly nonsense, or aren't you? Now, look, I'm willing to fix this whole thing. Well, that's very generous of you, but you'll have to excuse me. I'm just going downtown. And who do you think you're talking to, anyway? My wife. Oh, no, you haven't any wife. We're not married, Ducky, remember? Are you out of your mind? Certainly we're married. Not legally, we're not. Taxi. Oh, taxi. All right, we'll get married. Does that suit you? No, it doesn't. Lamb's department store driver. Hey, wait a minute. You're not getting in this cab. Maybe I'm in. Uh, go ahead, driver. Did you hear what I said? We'll get married again. Oh, no, we won't. If anyone asks you, Mr. Smith, you're no bargain. What's the matter with me? Name one thing about me you don't like. One thing? One thing? What about that tar stuff you keep rubbing in your hair that smells up the whole house? I'm on, only trying to keep my hair for you. Oh. And you're a fine one to talk going to bed with a head full of aluminum. You, 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 you turned over once and cut me in 20 places. Well, you're not going to be cut anymore, dearie. Not by my aluminum clips. All right, and I'm not going to support you. How do you like that? Fine. Here you are, lady. Thank you very much. Here you are, driver, and keep the change. Thank you. You're not being very practical. How do you think you're going to live? I'm going to support myself, my good man. Uh, you won't mind if I leave you here at the employee's entrance. I have a job here. I start today. See you later, David. <laughs> Uh, 
Anne, will you please give up this job and go home? Will you get out of this door? People are looking at us. I'm not going to have you standing around selling men's socks. Hose. Hose nuts. You're coming home with me. You take your hands off me. Let go of my wrist. Miss Campbell, whatever are you doing to that customer? Well, I, I'm, I'm not doing anything. Look, who's got who? Let go of me, you heel. I'm sorry, sir, but I'll have to ask you to release our sales clerk. Would you like to try to make me release her? I, well, if you're not pleased with this clerk, I'll be happy to get you another. I'm pleased with her and she's no clerk, you jerk. This is my wife. She's coming home. I'm not. Miss Campbell, we'll have to take this up with the head of the department. This store does not employ married women. I am not married. You are too married. Please, please, let us not forget that we are ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Miss Campbell, you're discharged. What's the matter, Dave? Why are you pacing around the office like that? No reason, Jeff. I just like exercise. David, we've been partners a long time. I'd like to help you. I, I know how you feel. Oh, no, you don't. I asked Ann to have me to dinner tonight. We're all good friends, and I think I can straighten this thing out for you. How about letting me do that? And say you drop in unannounced about, uh, oh, nine o'clock, huh? You mean it? You do that? Jeff, old man, that's the finest. That's the most decent. That's the most... all right. But we're partners. Yes, sir, and you're the best partner a man ever had. And we've been buddies ever since we went to college. You bet we have. And you were the best fullback Alabama ever had. You know, Jeff, I always said Hinkle was a greater back. But I was wrong. Hinkle couldn't touch you. Thank you, David. Thank you. All right, I'll be there at nine. And I'll be there before you, chum. <laughs> In just a moment, Act Two of Mr. and Mrs. Smith from the stage of Vic Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory and featuring Betty Winkler. And now, let's try to clear up a question every mother has on her mind these wintry days when children come down with colds. Well, here is something you should know. The modern way most mothers use to relieve distress of children's colds is to rub Vic's vapor rub on throat, chest, and back. And here's the reason vapor rub is so widely used. You see, the moment you rub vapor rub on, its relief-giving action starts right to work and keeps on working for hours to bring such welcome relief. It helps relieve congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages, the coughing spasm, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. And results are so good because vapor rub penetrates penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates. Stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting, warming poultice. So, when colds strike, remember vapor rub, And remember, too, only vapor rub gives you this special, penetrating, stimulating action. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Vicks Vapor Rub. As we open the second act of Mr. and Mrs. Smith, it's nine o'clock that evening, and David stands forlornly and wistfully outside his own door. A box of flowers under one arm, a box of candy under the other. Somewhat nervously, he rings. Uh, uh, hello, Ann. Uh, hello, Jeff, old boy. Uh, well, uh, isn't anybody going to say hello or, or something? Anything you wish to say to me, Mr. Smith, you can say to my lawyer. Well, certainly. Lawyer? What, what, what lawyer? Ann has asked me to represent her in this matter, David. <laughs> I've been telling her she doesn't need a lawyer. I'll say she doesn't. Because as I understand the facts, you two aren't really married. But not really married? Why, you... 
You hillbilly ambulance chaser. There's no need losing our tempers. And let now. me tell you once and for all, we are married. If not legally, then by common law, which is just as good. It's better. Yes, but should the woman care to halt this relationship and marry someone else, she's entitled to do so. I cite Peterson versus Peterson, Adams versus Kelly, and Hogue versus New Pennsylvania Coal Company. <laughs> and you are supposed to be my best friend. I am your best friend. And would you care to have dinner with me tomorrow night? Oh, well, I'd love to, Jeff. Where? And if you have dinner with this polecat tomorrow night, and this is final, we're through. What time would you like to have dinner, Jeff, dear? All right, then. We're through. From this moment on, we're through. How about the stork club, Anne? Oh, that'd be wonderful. Sabotage, that's what it is. Sabotage. You and Jeff, you, Jeff Custer, you you have the nerve to compare yourself with Hinkle as a football player? Why, you couldn't carry Hinkle's water bucket. Good night. Hello, Smith and Custer Law Offices. What? Oh, yes. Shut that door, Dave. I've got to talk to you, and I'm in a hurry. I didn't come here to talk to you, Jeff. I came here to smack you in the nose. Oh, stop talking like that. What your wife needs is a letter, and I think I know just how to give it to her. Hmm? Now, get this. I haven't time to go into detail, because my mother and father are in the next room, and we have to work fast. They stopped off on their way to Lake Placid. Okay, pal, what do I do? Just follow my lead and play along, that's all. And when Ann shows up, don't get sore if I seem to be a little clubby with her. Do you get it? No, but I can still take a punch at you if I find out you're pulling a fast one. All right. Come on. Mother, Dad, this is my partner, David. I'm happy to know you. Oh, the pleasure is all, so. Uh, indeed you. it is. We know so much about you, David. Jefferson's written about you in practically every letter. Well. You seem just like one of the family. Sorry to be late, Jeff. Well, that's all right, dear. Mother, father, this is Anne, my fiancée. Why, you low you? down. Well, no. bless your heart, honey. I declare you're just what I hoped you'd be. Yes, sir, pretty as a picture. Uh, may I kiss her, Jeff? No, I <laughs> certainly. Mm -mm, yes, sir, prettiest Yankee girl I ever saw. Uh, do you know Miss Campbell, David? Do I? Uh, to... Oh, yes, yes, Miss Campbell and I are <laughs> her old friends. Well, Jeff, you rascal. I declare I didn't give you credit for having such good taste. <laughs> now, Dad. Now, I... don't you be shy, son. You're, you're a very lucky man. Uh, wouldn't you say so, David? I certainly would. If it wasn't for me, they'd never even have gotten together. Oh, now, isn't that sweet? Mm -hmm. You know what I was thinking, Father? Ooh. If the two young people wanted to go on a honeymoon, they could take the boat to New Orleans and then motor right up through the south to our home. Well, that wouldn't be so good for Anne. She's not a very good sailor. Uh, honey, you remember how sick you got when we took the night boat to Albany? David! Yeah, well, you did. <laughs> And, and, Jeff, don't you let her eat anything on the boat, even if she wants to. You you, you put her to bed and put a hot water bottle on her stomach and hold it there. Uh, uh, Jeff, no matter how she hollers, you hold it there. That uh, settles her stomach. Well, baby, I... Uh, and, 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 by the way, Anne, shouldn't my laundry be back by now? I'm all out of sorts. Why, Jeff, son. Well, uh, Dad, uh, Anne uh, kind of took care of his things around the house. Yes, little uh, household things. <laughs> oh, she's the best little housekeeper you ever saw. You know, when a man has been sitting across the breakfast table from a woman for three solid years and still wants to marry her, she has to be quite a girl. Oh, Father, did you hear that? Yes. Jefferson, may I see you alone for a moment, please? <laughs> Why, sure, Dad. Come, come, Mother. Excuse us, please. Are you satisfied now? Are you satisfied to hurt you fine old people like that? What about me being oh, hurt? Oh, all you ever think about is yourself. You know, I can't see how you could have been associated with Jeff for so long and not gotten some of his fine qualities. What's fine about them? He's kind and simple and, and gentle. He's simple, all right. <laughs> Look, Anne, aren't you about ready to throw this nonsense out the window? Oh, come on, honey. We belong together like the stars and the moonlight, the... Wind in the springtime, the sun and the rain, the, the sun bees and the... the rain do not go together. Don't split hairs, Anne. Gosh darn it, I love you. I cannot stand the man that shouts. Jeff never shouts. He's always kind, always gentle. And since when were you so crazy about this gentle act? Shall I recall for you how I got this scar on my forehead with a lamp thrown by you, my pet? 
Well, I was younger then, and I thought I loved you. Well, then, Anne, throw another lamp out and marry me. And dear, I, I straightened things out with mother and father, and they want me to bring you up to Lake Placid next weekend for some skiing. How about it? Why, yes, yes, I'd love to. All right. All right, that settles it. The camel's back has broken. The rolling stone has uh, gone to the well once too often. Good night. Goodbye. Goodbye. And don't forget, he'll last last. Devil's no moss. Goodbye. I hope you find this cabin satisfactory and that you enjoy your stay in Lake Placid. This is your suite in here, Miss Custer. I was to tell you that your parents will be back this evening. They went on a sleigh ride in the mountains and were held up by a storm. Uh, this is your suite on the left, Miss Campbell. Thank you. Everything isn't perfectly satisfactory. Kindly let us know. Yes, eh? we will. My, he's a cheerful fellow, isn't yes, he? Yes, yes, he is. Mind if I come in and take a look at your place? No, Jeff, not at all. Um... Uh, Jeff, look! It's David! Yes, and gosh, he looks ill. David! Catch him, Jeff! He's falling! Oh! Oh, Jeff, he's fainted! Well, go, go on, don't stand there! Get some water quickly! Oh, well, David, just, just... David, David! Hurry up, Jeff! Just a minute! Oh, he looks as though he hasn't shaved for a week. He must be terribly ill. Hurry, Jeff! Here you are. Hold his head up. Oh, here, David, honey. Oh, David, David, why do you do such foolish things? He must have followed us up here. Jeff, he's, he's hardly breathing. I'll get him over to the bed. Well, be careful now. Be careful. Yeah. Oh. Don't worry, Ann, I've got him. I'll help you. I think he'll be all right. A few hours sleep ought to bring him around. Jeff, he'll have to have a doctor. First two weeks from December. What was you saying? Oh, first. we were coming here the first two weeks in December. Don't we'll be crazy about Lake Placid, Anne. Two weeks in the snow, we'll have lots of fun. Isn't that terrible? Oh, David. Um, um... Jeff, he's opening his eyes. Hello, Anne. <laughs> I'm not Anne, I'm Jeff. <laughs> I'll never forget you in that little blue dress. And quit looking at me. I never had a blue dress in my life. He's thinking about the dress I was wearing when I met him. He liked me in blue. I think we ought to let him rest. Oh. What's he doing? That's not a death rattle, is it? I don't think so. I wish I could hear it again, huh? Ah. Uh... Oh, Jesus. And uh, come to the next room a moment. I want to talk to you. Oh, do, you do you think it's all right to leave him? Sure, we'll only be a minute. And there's something I'd like to say. Yeah. You've had three years with David, and whether you realize it or not, there's a bond between you that's not easily broken. Well, people get divorced. I know, oh. Anne, I know. But I want to see you happy. And as peculiar as David is, I don't think you can be happy without him. So, why not let up on him? Jeff, I don't think a person ever existed as fine and generous as you are. And, uh, wait a minute. I hear something. Yes, I do. Look, you go on talking while I open the door. All right. Oh, well, you see, Anne, it is my contention. <laughs> Why, David? I thought so. You heal. You weren't sick at all. That was just an act to get our sympathy. I thought I heard you creeping over to the door. You're a, an eavesdropper. That's what you are. Why did you come up here anyway? Oh, listen, Ann, I know eavesdropper. I love you, that's all. And I came up here because you're mine and because you belong to me. You don't love Jeff. Nobody could love that pile of southern fried chicken. <laughs> Listen, Ann, think of all the things we'd planned, the little house we were going to buy, the kids we were going to buy, uh, the, the kids uh, kids we were going to have, the roses that would grow over the door. You haven't forgotten all that. No, I haven't forgotten, but you listen to me. No, you're going to listen to me. Now sit down there. Oh, well, you brute, you let me up this minute. Oh, no. You're going to sit there and tell me that you're going to marry me again. I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. I wouldn't marry you if you came crawling on your knees across broken glass. I wouldn't marry you if I... 
Mr. Smith. Well, 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 for goodness sake, Mr. Deaver, what brings you back from Beecham County? Oh, I'm so glad you haven't forgotten Beecham County, Mr. Smith, because Beecham County hasn't forgotten you. A piece of state legislature has been passed, and I'm happy to tell you that your marriage is perfectly in order. You are married. Married. She said, you are married. Married? Yes, that's right. For better or for worse, as long as you both shall live. And now could I have my two dollars back, please? <laughs> well, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> oh, darling. Oh, darling. Oh, sister, you're hooked. You know, I'm kind of glad it's all settled. I did miss you, darling, because, well, there's no one in the world quite like you, David. <laughs> of course not. I told you that. And, David, darling, we'll never have another fight as long as we live. You bet we won't. From now on, we'll live happily ever after. Oh, darling. It's so nice to be in your arms again. Hold me tight. Mm-hmm. David? Yes? How many girls have you loved before you met me? Oh, 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 no, you don't. I've been vaccinated, sister. No more questions, no more answers. But if you really want to know, I've never loved another girl. And what's more, I never will. I love you. Only you, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> In just a moment, Victor Jory will return to the microphone. Of course, it's bad enough when a bothersome cold drags you down and spoils the plans you've made for Sunday. But think about tomorrow and do something about that cold distress. You have the personal experience of millions of thankful families to guide you. Tonight at bedtime, do this. Rub Vicks Vapor Rub on your throat, chest, and back. VapoRub's famous relief-giving action starts right to work. And it keeps on working for hours to bring you wonderful comfort. It invites restful sleep. And often by morning, most of the misery of that cold is gone. Yes, if you have a cold, don't take needless chances with untried remedies. Rub on VapoRub, the modern way so widely used these days. The best-known home remedy for relieving distress of colds. Time-tested, home-proved Vicks VapoRub. This is Victor Jory speaking. I want to acknowledge the many requests for your favorite plays. Next week's choice was voted for very heavily from all parts of the country. It was from Charlotte Bronte's immortal classic, Jane Eyre. I'll play the role of Rochester, and Jane Eyre will be played by one of your favorite leading ladies. Will you again help me to decide the following week's play? Our sponsor, Vix, wants me at all times to present your favorites. Write to me, care of Vix Matinee Theater, Columbia Broadcasting, 22, New York. The role of Anne in today's play was played by Betty Winkler. Mr. and Mrs. Smith was adapted by Gene Holloway from RKO's motion picture of the same name and was directed by Richard Sandville. RKO is currently presenting one of their finest pictures, None But the Lonely Heart, with Cary Grant and Ethel Barrymore. Victor Jory is now co-starring with Miriam Hopkins in The Perfect Marriage. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to listen again next week when Vicks, the makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, 
Vicks Vapronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler present the Matinee Theater's production of Jane Eyre, starring Victor Jory as Rochester. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>